I'll explain everything about these three. Just stay focused while watching this video, then you'll fully understand them, okay? Let's talk about the first one. Before that, actually, let me ask you about something. What should this be? Three, right? How about this one? Three as well. You know what these vertical bars are, right? We use it when we talk about absolute values. The signs don't matter. The green arrow is reaching 3, and the blue arrow is reaching negative 3. But both the arrows have the length of 3, right? So we could say that the absolute value of a number kind of represents magnitude or length of the number. Now, we just use the single vertical parenthesis for the length of a number. We use a double vertical parenthesis for the length of a vector. The first one, we called it the absolute value. The second one, we call it a vector norm. So the concepts are pretty much the same. It's just one is for a number, the other one is for a vector. That's all. So for example, we have this vector a. It's reaching 1, square root of 3, let's say. And what's the length of this vector? We just need to use the Pythagorean theorem. So the length is 2. Again, norm of a vector is the magnitude or length of the vector. That's it. Projection of B onto A. What do we call this? A projector, right? Yes, that's what we are talking about in here. Say we have this letter standing in a room and you're shining light at the letter. How should the shadow look like? It should of course look like the letter A. But what if we shine it from the side? Can you guess? The shadow should look like just a vertical line, right? So on which wall or screen we are projecting the shadow on will determine the shape of the shadow. Now we have two vectors pointing in different directions. We're going to shine at the vector B, so the shadow is projected on the vector A. When we project something, we are projecting in the direction perpendicular to the screen, okay? That's the rule. So B is the object, and A is the screen. The shadow will look like this. Make sense? And the length of this shadow is written as projection of the vector B onto the vector A. Again, A is the screen, and B is the object. You can think in that way. This time, we're going to project A onto B. So B is the screen and A is the object. The shadow of A will look like this. And we express it mathematically like this. So projection of the vector A onto the vector B this time. But wait, the shadow seems to be bigger than the screen. Is that okay? Yes, that's okay. Because the vector B isn't a physical object, but rather just an information that's telling us in which direction it's heading to and by how much at a time. So this whole thing is a screen. So projection doesn't talk about the length of the screen. I'll explain you more about projection later. Let's leave this for now. Even if you know about this one already, try to not skip it. You might learn something new. Now, let's learn about dot product. I brought two vectors here. Dot product of two vectors is just this. It's the matrix multiplication, but with one lines. I'll assume that you already know how to do the matrix multiplication, okay? What do we get? 3. By the way, 3 is a scalar, right? Scalar just means a number. So this is why the dot product is also called scalar product because it gives a scalar. Anyway, let's talk about this math that gave us the answer 3. So, where was this one coming from? It was the x component of the vector a, right? And what is that from the graph? It's basically the shadow of the vector a, isn't it? 
So that number corresponds to the projection of A onto B. Now, how about this number? What is this from the graph? It's precisely the length of B. So we could have done the same thing with the second term, okay? But in this case, the second term became zero, so we don't need to worry about it. We see that this is pretty much what we actually did for the dot product. Magnitude of the vector B times the projection of A onto B. Now let's further talk about this projection. Isn't this shadow just the length of A times cosine theta? This length is 2 just by the Pythagorean theorem. And you know what this angle is? From one of the special triangles, it was 60 degrees for this length ratio. This is 1. And in fact, the projection was about the number 1. So it makes all sense. We can now rewrite the expression. So I just replaced this with this. And this is our final expression for the dot product. Go try to search dot product on Google. You'll see the exact same formula. We just derived that by ourselves. Good job. So, why do we have to learn dot product? What's its use? Let's go back to this. What was the angle between the two vectors? 60 degrees, right? From the special triangle. But we know this angle just because we knew about the special triangle. What if we have this kind of case, where we have no idea what this angle should be? This is where we use dot product. Watch this. I just moved the magnitudes of A and B to the other side. We all know how to calculate this, just a matrix multiplication. And you know how to find the length of the vectors, just use the Pythagorean theorem. Then we should be able to find this theta. Let's try it. You could use a calculator to find what theta is now, or some of you might already know what this is. So, why do we have to learn the dot product? To find angle between two vectors. Wait, we're not done yet. Let's see if this makes sense. Say we have two vectors that are parallel with each other. What should be the angle between them? Of course, zero, right? Let's see if the dot product works properly. It does give the angle of zero. Confirmed. But why do we have to know the angle between two vectors? Well, scientists and mathematicians need to know. It just comes in handy. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.